Hi guys, Vodo here and today I'm teaching you how to defeat all the bosses without taking any damage. I will show you the strategy, the setup and then the fight itself. So, the first thing you do is as soon as the game starts, you're going to go left and try to find that incense over there. It's a little tricky, but it's not impossible. See? It's the bloody incense, one of the best in the game, and it will make your life very, very easy. By the way, you can get a coin over here as well. So, for the first battle, you're going to equip the Blood Incense. And you're going to use it before the battle, just before you enter this room. If you use the Incense during the battle, it's going to count as damage. And... You're not going to get the extra item for killing the boss with no damage. So go ahead and use the blood incense and I suggest that you change to healing incense right after it, okay? So blood incense. I changed it for healing incense and Let's go, like a frog. Skip, skip, skip. You can rush and hit her at the beginning. Try to keep a relative close distance from her. And we are done. First try. You're going to get the Frigid Intense, which is also one of the best Intense in the game. It gives you extra damage, so I keep it right away. Okay, for the second boss, we are going to need Blood Intense, Healing Intense, Frigid Intense, Spring drop incense. Uh, I don't know exactly where you get spring drop incense, but you can look up online. Why do we need that? Because uh, it grants a short burst of invincibility, which is very helpful. Okay, and I suggest that you also get the um, the special attack, you know, heavy thrust. Okay, so um, same with you. We are going to use blood incense before the battle, before we enter the room, and then we're going to use healing incense with the other one to grant some kind of invincibility for a short period of time okay okay so here we go start with a charged attack Okay, she's done. And we got Claremont, which is a new sword. I suggest you keep it right away. 
because it does 1.25 more damage. Okay, for the third boss, we are going to use Healing Incense, Blood Incense, and Storm Incense. Storm Incense, it's very good. I'm going to show you why. And my sword is the Brunhilda. You can use whatever you choose, but Brunhilda, it's pretty good, and I'm going to show you why. So let's go, Blood Incense activated. Kill this little guy over here, change to Storm Incense. Start the battle with a charged attack. Keep it hitting and keep pairing these attacks until you see. You can spam a lot of Storm Incense. She will eventually fall to the ground. Be aware of this explosion attack she does, keep her distance, and just kill her. It's pretty easy, it's a easy battle, and we're done. The secret here is spamming the storm incense. You see, it does huge damage, it's very effective, but as I said, you have to kill that little guy at the beginning or else the storm incense is going to hit him, not the boss. Okay, for the next one, let's go. Okay, the thief boss. Let's see. Um, it's pretty much the same setup as the last boss. Healing incense, blood incense, and storm incense, frigid incense, and spring drop incense. Okay, and... I'm using Claremont as a weapon. Um, this boss is not that difficult as well, so let's do it. As always, activate Blood Incense, change for Storm Incense, and just do it! Pretty easy. Uh, their incense is not that good as well. It's not that good either. Sorry. Um, as I said, pretty easy. I got this in one go, you know. Shut up, shut up, shut up. Let's check what we've got. During incense, inflict 40% more stun on enemies. It's interesting, but I prefer Spring Drop and Frigid Incense for now. Next! And we are finally approaching the end of the game. And the setup for this boss is pretty much the same as the last one. Healing Incense, Blood Incense, Storm Incense, Frigid Incense, and Spring Drop Incense. The Spring Drop Incense will be especially useful in this battle because the boss has like uh, this stomp attack and it's very hard to avoid, so I suggest spamming healing senses to get uh, invulnerability and avoiding the attack all together so let's go as usual activate blood incense leave storm incense selected hold the attack button for a charged attack You can spam Storm Incense.
Got it. Um, as you can see, sometimes like a bloody thing drops from the ceiling. That shit will do damage to you, so beware. And we got bloody crescent incense. I recommend using that until the last boss. And okay, two more to go. The big one. Okay. Um, same setup. But now we are using the Blood Crescent Incense that we got from the last boss. And Claremont as the weapon of choice. Okay, let's start this. And that was pretty easy. I don't know why the storm incense didn't quite work as expected, but okay. But the important thing is now you have this wonderful intense call Calming Sea creates a protective barrier that will absorb any damage dealt to the user, but only once. You can use this three times during the final battle. So, let's do it. And finally, the final boss. Okay, the setup. Uh, Claremont for extra damage. Um, we don't need the healing incense, so we are going to change it for um, Calming Sea Incense that you got from the last boss. Alright, um, Frigid Incense and Bloody Crescent Incense are the choices here. So, what you're going to do is, you're going to activate the Calming Sea and save your game. So, now you have the barrier and you also have two extra uses, two extra chargers for this incense. Okay, it's time to face the final boss. Let's go. Oh, and one more thing, um, to avoid accidentally using the blood incense during the battle, I suggest that you use the bow chargers now, before you enter the next zone, okay? So just do it. And save the storm intent for this farm for her final form. It will do massive damage to her. And she's done.
Witch Princess Incense. And that's it, folks. I hope you like it. If you did, hit that like button, subscribe, consider becoming a member of this channel, share this video with your friends, and that's all for now, and bye-bye.